I'm going to call the order this meeting of the senior services uh, committee on um, December 6th at 8 a.m. I'm Stephanie Depp, chair of the Senior Services Commission. I'm just going to go around the room and introduce myself. We are not to be on our friends committee person. So, you guys, the commission. Randy Meyer, I'm the commission. Super level is on the brain board. Go ahead and speak to all. Karen Lawrence, friends for Joanne Wood, friends for Kathleen, friends for Which one's called friends for? And there's a couple of I'm not friends for, but I'm also going to friends for Randy Rash, I'm on the friends. Uh, Keith Jack, I'm the commission. Don Schulke, commission member. Allison, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, Allison Petrie. I'm on the Friends Board. You guys hear that in the back? Okay, good. And then I'm Emily Rendell Robo. I'm the Director of Senior Services. And perfect timing, Casey Bradley, City Administrator. If we would all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, everyone on the commission should have gotten a copy of the July 19th mini meeting minutes. Uh, any discussions, edits, additions? Otherwise, I call for a motion to approve. So, yeah. All in favor? Yes. Uh, moving on, discussion of uh, Senior Services Friends of Uptown Social Operating Board. Yes. Um, so I'll jump in here. Um, mainly, when our new city administrator started uh, a month ago, oh, hi, Laura. Oh, there is one. Okay, good. Um, I was explaining how the relationship between the city and the friends has functioned, uh, especially regarding the financial operations. So as you um, maybe you don't know, but maybe you do, um, for the past however many years, almost all of the financial operations of this organization have flown, have funneled through the friends. So membership fees, program fees, um, the cafe expenses and revenue, trip revenue, um, as well as charitable giving. And um, as we've grown and gotten bigger um, with consulting with city attorney Adams, um, that's probably not the best way for us to be functioning. Um, and so mainly, I, I know I've had conversations with a lot of you separately, but mainly this group together today is to talk about um, why we need to make this change and how we can make this change. So Chuck, I don't know if you want to chime in. Yeah, and just to make it simple, the, the issue really comes down to the IRS and tax uh, issues. So when when funds from the city are are it's improper for taxpayer funds in the city to be basically forwarding to the government, even if they are not profit. So that that's the problem with the city. It's perceived that taxpayer dollars are not moving to the Put the other way, it doesn't prevent the friend from having their own funds that city dollars end up sort of in the You want to add anything? Yeah, kind of off of that, um, another issue we ran into and we lucked out, fortunately, but um, basically, the IRS looks at you're either government or you're not. Government or you're not. There's no nonprofit. There's nothing um, in terms of tax exempt bonds. So um, we ran into this luck out in this particular case, but um, the amount of revenue that's being generated is not limitless. I mean, you're looking at $160,000 a year that's being generated with city tax dollars that's going to the funds right now. Um, 
that amount of money would actually make our bonds taxable, which would put the city in a whole in a very bad situation. So fortunately, this was done through CDBG, and CDBG with this particular program tells them that to begin with. So we don't even need to worry about it now. But in the future, we will have to look at the so essentially where we're looking at going from here is kind of finishing out 2023 as we have been as normal but um there's an agenda item um that'll be on the personnel and finance committee next week for the city and then you know following council essentially for a significant budget amendment that would be all of the earned revenues that this entity has been bringing in reflected on the city's books um, and of course the expenses that go along with it so we've talked about the revenues that the, have been going to the friends it would be um unreasonable not to recognize that almost all of the, well, not almost all, but a lot of the operating expenses of this organization have also been paid by, by the friends. So it's not like this pile of money has been going into the friends coffers to gain every year. It's just that it really should be under the undersight or the oversight of the city council. Um, so we'll have a budget amendment next week. Um, and I believe I had sent out in the packet um, what that proposal would look like. Uh, the one thing that's still missing is um, currently, uh, Vicki, who is uh, the cafe coordinator, is a contracted employee of the Friends. So all of the cafe operations would move into the city too, which would mean Vicki would become an employee of the city. So those expenses are not reflected on the draft yet because we're waiting to have that position evaluated. Oh, we just got it yesterday. Okay, so I haven't seen it yet, but so those numbers will change to reflect um, how her position is graded. Um, and then of course, all the other expenses that go along with paying someone beyond their hourly rate. Sure. So what we're proposing to finance and ultimate the city council is that we create a special revenue fund. So the revenues that are generated here stay here. So while they'll be under this control of city council, they'll be here marked specifically for our council. So it's not as if you know, the revenues will go back into the general fund or anything like that. So it'll be specifically earmarked. They'll come in to Uptown Social, it'll be used for either capital or operating expenses for Uptown Social. And then, um, you guys can be able to fund balance that. I think that's probably hit on the staffing. Um, so I think overall, there shouldn't be a whole lot of change operationally. And we're also, um, we have to reallocate some of our ARPA funding. So we propose that um, the city would pay for 450,000 out of our ARPA funds. If the friends came up for 400,000 out of the friends. Leave. You guys in a pretty healthy situation still, and then we hopefully get the uh, if approved by council, we can get the gym done or get. So that's kind of our proposal. To hopefully, get get you guys more activity and more amenities at the facility, and still uh, get what we need. So, so from uh, you know, I'm looking at some some of like Sue and Marilyn are. are and then basically like how the bills get paid and yeah so i don't think the general membership would really even care to know um, yeah just remember for whom you vote because right now city council is on our side and they will have the final vote on us <laughs> Yeah. 
question. Yeah. You talked about finishing the gym, but in the future, how is the city going to make improvements on all of this stuff? On this building? Since you own it, is this going to be through the budget process every year? Is it capital? I don't know. Why. Yes and no. Um, so you guys would have, by having a special revenue fund, building your own fund balance as well. So it wouldn't necessarily be just through the general fund allocation for capital, but it would also be if you guys have fund balance contribute, and maybe we have to ask the general fund for you know supplementing part of that deficiency. What I'm saying, what, what part, of, part of what I'm getting at is okay, is the commission have to go every year to the to the budget process and say, hey, we're we're thinking about promotion of the year. The money and also it'll be based on the project. Oh, so right now that phase three, um, we're trying to figure out the portions of it into phase two. Um, but ultimately, we can also look at that fund balance as it grows to getting those projects done as well. Oh. And you guys still have the ability to fundraise if you want to do that. It's not quicker than. Maybe having counsel go through their process. So John's on the commission, not the friends. So he's the yeah, yeah, but that's okay. We're yeah. But yeah that's... I agree. I think it'll be like as projects come up, it's as it has been in the past, it's always there's always sort of been a conversation between the city and the friends of like, okay, here's what the city can do, here's what the friends can do. Can we find a way to like make work together to make it happen? And I think that'll continue to be the expectation. Maybe on that, I know how this works. But <laughs> that's why we like having you here, Derek. I perhaps will have some questions so that I can understand how will uh, Uptown Social will accumulate funds in the fund balance. Um, so right now, I think it's 160 ish <laughs> revenue wise. I think about 60,000 surplus. So that would put it in the fund balance. Well, it's going to fluctuate your so not right. all the revenue that is going to be spent towards offset expenses. There's some of it that will, some will be like that. Right. That's fine. I don't know what concern when this came up. It's because, you know, I'm not familiar with how all the other departments function, but at Bird's Eye View, I think we're, we're pretty unique in that our revenue fluctuates quite a bit. Um, and so, like, when I put a budget together, I always try to be pretty conservative. You know, estimate high on expenses and estimate low on revenue. So hopefully you can do better than that. But so my question was, okay, so if we really blow it out of the water and our membership fees are higher, our trips do better, what does does all of that money just fall into the black hole that is the city's general fund? And so with this special revenue fund, that would be a no. So let's say, um, let's say the the budget comes out ahead an extra fifty thousand dollars next year that money would build up and then if that happens every year then maybe a few years from now we say okay now we can put i'm making this up so we're not, we're not actually going to do that but you know what i mean like we've got there's money there that that can be tapped into for for projects like this um how about the employees of uptown social how will they be paid will that be out of the special revenue fund or is that out of the separate city fund? Uh, special, all your operations would be out of the special fund. Oh, so we wouldn't have to worry about if there needed to be budget cuts at all of a sudden we need Vicki or Josh or anybody. Staffing decisions are always city council's purview. So I can't say no. Um, we wanted to add a staff member. As you do now. That's staffing with the exception of the one contract employee is 100% city. So city council dictates the staffing levels, they approve that and we do it. So ultimately that would be an ask of city council. And for, for one important, some of the newer committee members, there's been a history of some employees being city employees and some employees being friends employees. Um, I'm not a fan of that for a few reasons. I, I don't I don't think it's fair to the friends employees because they're not getting benefits. They're not accessing, uh, they're not able to access some of the benefits that come with being part of a bigger employer. And um, I wasn't here at the time, but um, 
my experience is that it created some animosity between employees that some got this and others didn't. Um, so I've been a pretty loud cheerleader since I started about the friends not having employees. And also from an operational standpoint, it's a lot of extra work to do the same thing. So it's been really nice not having unemployment insurance for the friends and, um, you know, not while well, we have Vicky, so Vicky has to get paid, but running two payrolls, it's, it's a lot of extra work for not great things. I know it's a very good thing for the family and that, uh, but for Emily, one of the things we really looked for was the fundraising ability. And that was part of the job description was fundraising. So, what role can uh, is Emily going to be able to have in fundraising right now? That does not change. Pardon? The jobs don't change. That's part of it. This is just strictly bringing the revenue back that the city, that city dollars are generating. But she did, she did fundraising for the friends of the city of Florida, right? Yeah, she does that now. Yeah, I think Rich just wanted to make sure. Yeah, yeah I know we've talked about it in our journal. Yeah, yeah, and I think Chuck can explain it a little better than I can why it's okay. In essence, what's happening is you know, the, the immediate concern is well, if Emily is raising money for a private organization, and use pay her dollar to raise money for a private organization. I don't see that as necessarily being an issue because this is not like the bond issue. This is an issue where we can make this thing. The purpose of the fundraising is for the incentive to be called out on social, which is the city energy. And she is using other resources to be friends to do that, and therefore assisting them with raising funds to help us on social. That's perfectly fine. Suddenly, the friends started going into other things, which I don't think you can based on your charter, but that, that would be a problem, but that doesn't be special needs funds for that kind of thing. was our revenue, and you know, we generally have a budget in that. Um, the friends don't have to come for every expense to say, Can we do this? Can we do that? Do you know what I mean? I mean, it, right, it's right, the part of the budget. So we still have the flexibility that they have unless it's like a really good thing and yeah, really special good. projects and ultimately we'll have that as part of our capital plan, so that's also part of the budget process. So yeah, hopefully it reduces the burden on the Can I go back to that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. yeah. Cool. since we Rich, you're gonna go ahead. Go ahead, Rich. Right. You had a question? Yeah. I agree. I do know what, um, and this has happened to other organizations, but if you're making any of is that if someone donates a physical, let's say a pool, a pool it's because our yes. is here, the city has all of any gifts, or do we, if they give it to the friends, the friends give it to the pool. So you can, you can handle that two different ways. One, it can be a direct donation to the city, which I'm guessing that they want to back right up. Work they do, but um, you can they could donate it to the friends and get the tax right off. And the friends could do one of two things they can loan it to the city and we have an agreement that it's all about all the for you. Hey, that's a question that I'm sure is going to pop up. Well, and I think that question has come up a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think there are no any policy ones, but thank you very much. Technically, if something is here more than 30 days, I just remember when we were moving over, people started wanting some of the stuff back that they owned. Well, we've also started, that's that's a problem in and of itself. That I know. If someone, so now we've started where when folks make an in kind donation, I know, I know, but it was quite a problem that caused me a lot of headaches. Uh, so now when folks make an in kind donation to the friends, we have a form that they sign that says, I recognize that I'm donating this to you. It's your property. I just ask for it back. Because if they're getting the tax donation as a, as a if they're getting the tax write off, they can't come back and ask us three years later if we're still using it and request it back. Back to the gym. Since we're starting to move 2024 and your budget's already set, are we just going to have to go through the council and the process to get the money? Or the gym, the whole thing, or how's that going to work? So that's on the agenda for 
Tuesday night? Monday. Monday. Or is it Tuesday? I think it's Tuesday. Okay. Um, I already went to the first reading at City Council last two, uh, Monday. Um, so then following Monday, it'll be on Council for the final approval. So in that, we've allocated, we're reallocating a um, substantial amount of ARPA funds with other projects done in time. And our proposal is that we allocate 450000 to this project in the anticipation of 400000 coming from the French group. So we met with the construction team yesterday. We're going to look at if this is all approved, hopefully get the bid out to the chain. Mm -hmm. So hopefully have construction underway on the way. What type of funds that housing we is that original grant we were approved? Is that what it is? Or? No, it's uh ARPA, the city lives, it's the Airbnb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was part of the COVID funds that went out. Um we had a couple of projects that are delayed that are out of time and ultimately they have one of them has a different funding source altogether that keeps that freezes money up. So we basically went down the capital list of projects that were available and ready to go and this is obviously one of them. So we think it's a great opportunity with this process and kind of looking at what the fund balance is and it's a good way to partner between the two. Um council's not gonna have the full weight of the project and then it's kind of more parallel. Gerald, I know. Does have a, um, I think it's a good idea. We were talking originally, there wasn't a lot of support for giving a bunch of money to the upfront social to fill up the game. And now this is hopefully the most easier. I guess the all comes around to that. And we talked about, you know, getting this done also helps generate more revenue. So, Kind of twofold, it's not necessarily spending with no return, it's expending that will return the benefit of town social specifically. So, yeah, so one thing we actually already used some ARPA funding for the first phase of construction, so we had the um, community development block grant funding for the majority of it, and then when that was capped, I think it was about seven hundred thousand dollars worth of ARPA funding was used. Um, there's some obviously anytime there's a funding source, there's stipulations around it. Um, and so one of the, the 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 way that we were able to say that we can use this funding is by um, as a response to COVID relief efforts, specifically by having vaccine clinics. So when we did the vaccine clinics earlier this year, not only was that you know a good thing to do for the community and a good thing for us, um, but also satisfied that requirement. And we hope to continue doing that moving forward. Moving forward. Um, for those on the commission who weren't are, who aren't quite as familiar as, as what's been going on with the friends, um, you know, initially the discussion even before I was hired was that the city would fund the first phase of construction, the friends would fund the gym. Um, I was hired, we've been fundraising. Fundraising has been challenging. Um, for a few reasons. One, a lot of the local population is not super familiar with the Friends, so it takes, and anyone who knows fundraising knows it takes a few years to build relationships, and so I share that because I just, I don't want anyone to think that we can go from zero to 100 overnight, um, and because I like numbers, sometimes they can be fun. Um, I did add things up in the time that I've been here I, with the friends, um, including the vaccine grant, have raised over $400,000 in the three years. Um, looking at the friends' history, all the way of QuickBooks records, um, this, it was 14 years prior to my hiring, the charitable giving was $274,000. So I just, I share that as context to say like, no, the, the friends have not raised all the money needed for the gym, but the growth in charitable giving has been substantial. So in talking with the friends, where we were finding a lot of success over the past year, um, much more so than anticipated was on the revenue side, where the memberships were exploding, the trip income was exploding, the program revenue, all of these things were significantly higher than anticipated. And so in a pivot of how to get the gym done, the plan at that time was to finance to, to pay some upfront for the gym, but then finance um, 
the construction, relying on the intended earned revenue coming in over future years to pay down a loan balance. And then obviously now with all of the revenue going over to the city, that's not an option for the friends. And if the friends moving forward are going to focus solely on charitable giving, that then that, you know, anticipated revenue isn't there to pay back a loan. So that's why um, kind of this pivot and strategy of how to make it happen. Cool. All right, any further discussion on agenda item number four? Um, all right, we'll move on and we'll do some of the actions on that. Mm -hmm. so, um, moving on to gymnasium financing, if you're kind of letting her touching on, is there anything further? I don't think we need to add anything else there unless anyone has any additional questions about the gym financing. Okay. All right, we'll move on to number six, a cultural presentation trend. What was included in the packet that was sent out, the dashboard? Yeah, so just really quickly, um, I have a couple extra copies if anyone wants to see it, but um, basically, um, for the first time, we've seen our membership uh, dip a little bit, which our staff kind of expected because we're one year out, and so we know we expected to see a little bit of attrition now as folks who signed up right when we opened um, maybe aren't renewing, maybe they've moved out of the area, maybe they've passed on. So that's, you know, we're still hovering right around 1,400 members. Um, unique visitors continues to be at about 60 plus a month. So we're still getting an influx of new people coming in to check us out. Um, average daily attendance. I mean, for those who are here on a daily basis, you can feel the difference with the weather cooling down. So as we're learning, we know we're very weather dependent. If it's nice outside, people will go outside and we love that for them. And if it's not nice outside, they come here, which is fine too. Um, any questions about participation? I do have a question. I noticed the furniture outside of her that um, seating areas that the mm -hmm. town paid for. Is that furniture, is that year round going to be out there or are we we'll storing it somewhere? We'll, we'll pull it inside. Okay. So it'll be stored on top of it. Yeah. And the lines are that kind of stuff. Yeah. Out of the winter weather during the first year. Okay. Any further discussion about the participation trend? Do we, when people's memberships are coming up, are, are we addressing that with individuals? Yeah, so Jane, once a month, looks at the upcoming month and will send a reminder to everyone to say, like, hey, your membership is up for renewal on such and such date. And then she'll say, you can either come in and renew at the desk, you can mail in a check, or there's a link to do it online. Um, for the for those who are active, you hopefully already noticed this. If you haven't, one of the big things we've been working on the last couple months was getting more new active and silver sneakers up and running. Um, so that is, those are Medicare reimbursement programs for folks who have uh, policies that qualify. So how they're working is um, people who have the ability give us their reimbursement number, we waive the membership fee and we waive their fitness class fees. And then once a month, we send in a report of how many times they check in and then we get a reimbursement from either Renew Active or Silver Sneakers for those attendees. So we just got our first monthly check um, from Renew Active. October was the first month we had, it was about 400 plus dollars. But we think we'll, we'll continue to see new folks coming in to utilize Silver Sneakers and Renew Active. So you get more reimbursement if you have more attendance yeah so we don't if, if you sign up as a member and never show up we get nothing um but every time you check in um we do and does it have to be in a fitness class or that no so actually they um my interpretation of how they how the benefits work is they know that whether you're showing up here to socialize or to go to a fitness class it's good for you and it's good for your health so like we do have um I won't use names, but one pool player who comes five days a week, every week to shoot pool. And that's a completely free activity. So prior to this program, apart from his annual membership fee of $30, that's all he was spending. And now he's spending nothing 
but we're getting the cap that we can get per person is twenty dollars per month. So we're getting uh, twenty dollars per month versus. So it's you know, but there the, there are certainly some super users of fitness classes that are maxing out the reimbursement, but it's it it equals out, and I think in the end it'll be more advantageous for us to be part of the program. Any further discussion? Um, commission members, to anything that we can the order? Nope. All right. Our next meeting is January 17th, 2024. Oh, good question. Oh. <laughs> uh, 8 a.m. again here in the creative studio. Um, if there's nothing more, I'll take a motion to adjourn with the commission meeting. Any second? Second. All in favor? Um, All right. This meeting, December 6th of the Senior Services Commission meeting, has been adjourned.